Hey family, welcome to another video. My name is Felix with Full Flow Health, where we make health and fitness simple and easy. In this video, the best weight loss workout without equipment. Before we begin, I'd like to ask the community a question. Is weight loss sustainable? Let me know in the comment section below what you think. I'll actually be providing the answer to this question towards the end of the video. So for the sake of answering the question that is the title of the video, I'm going to go ahead and just mention these two bullet points here. But before that, a warning, um, I am not recommending these two bullet points right here. And as we go further on into the video, actually, when as soon as I explain both of these, you'll understand why I'm not recommending them. And also later on in the video, we'll kind of understand the better alternative. Okay, so that first bullet point right there, uh, the best exercise for weight loss without any equipment is moderate to high intensity, long duration cardio. And I just want to mention two things about that first point. Um, the higher the intensity, the more lean mass is going to be lost, especially if we're training without weights and we're doing cardio, right? High intensity cardio. Also, the longer the duration the cardio, the more lean mass we lose. Secondly, the second bullet point here, um, only eating steamed low carb fruits and vegetables. Now there's a few things with this. Really, you can replace this word here steamed with any way of cooking the vegetables where we do not add oils. So you could say grilled, broiled, baked. So if you can see here, if we're cooking in a way in which we do not add fat, and then these fruits and vegetables are also low carb, then we're eating very little calories. And also fruits and vegetables are not a significant source of protein. So this is a formula for a very low calorie intake. These two bullet points are actually a formula for a lot of weight loss. And if you heard me mention before, a lot of lean mass loss. And the problem with losing a lot of lean mass is that all of the processes that occur on our lean mass are the metabolism. I hope that makes sense. So the, the more lean mass that our body has, the higher our metabolism. All right, that's why I am not recommending this. So let's talk about what we should be doing. Um, this is the list of content in the video. We're gonna talk about how calories affect body weight. We're gonna talk about body composition, nutrition, and then training with no equipment. So in this first slide, how do calories affect body weight? Before we get into these three examples here, one, two, and three, um, we're gonna set some variables. And this C right here is gonna be defined as the number of calories that we consume. And this W is gonna be defined as our body weight. So if we look at this first example here, we see that the number of calories that we consume just equal to whatever weight that we have. I'm going to take an educated guess here and I'm going to say that when you weigh yourself, your body does not fluctuate in weight so drastically. In fact, it probably only fluctuates between one to two pounds every day, right? That's how I am. That's how pretty much we all are. And the reason why is because of this third line down here is because as time progresses, right? each and every day we're eating around the same amount of calories so the average of that is around the same let's say that today i eat 2000 calories tomorrow i eat 1900 calories the next day i eat 2100 calories then the next day i eat 1800 the next 2200 so on and so forth it's going to average out over time to around the same amount of calories per day, which is why we weigh around the same plus or minus one or two pounds each and every day. Now in this middle example here, this is for someone who wants to significantly weigh less. So they don't want to just have um, one to two pounds of weight loss. They want to have um, 20 or more pounds of weight loss, right? Significant weight loss. And what I mean by these less than and greater than signs is significantly less than and significantly greater than. So if we look at this example, we can see that if we want to weigh significantly less, then we need to consume significantly less calories. And we can, by this example right here, we can understand that this will be unsustainable because the weight that we currently are 
is what we're able to sustain, which means that we are just eating around the same thing that we eat per day. We're eating what we're comfortable with eating every single day. Also, for those who um, want to actually gain weight, this is actually pretty unsustainable as well, right? Because they have to eat significantly more calories than they normally do. So what's a better alternative, right? If this and this are unsustainable, how do we achieve the results we want while maintaining the weight that we have now? And that's by focusing on body composition. And I want to explain body composition just by using money because we all love money, right? So half of $1 is 50 cents. Simple, easy. This first line right here actually represents this first example, this one, the second line, and this one, the third line. If you can see here, this second example, half of 50 cents equals 25 cents. So in this second example, this line is half as long as this first line, but proportionally, they're the same. They are half fat mass and half lean mass. So when somebody does lose a lot of weight, but they don't focus on improving their body composition, the result in the mirror is the same. The weight loss may be there, but the aesthetic change that we want to occur is not there. So we think that losing more weight is the answer when it's actually not. Now, let's take a look at the third line. 90% of $1 is 90 cents. It's almost a dollar. It's only 10 cents short of a dollar. That's what this third line here is depicting, that most of the line is lean mass. Most of the body weight is lean mass. And again, as I mentioned before, the more lean mass that we have, the higher the metabolism, the more we're able to eat while putting on less body fat or maintaining less body fat. So for nutrition, if we put our nutrition into a ratio, it can really help us easily eat plenty while maximizing lean body mass. And I want to reiterate on this easily eat plenty. This is where most people who are trying to become fitter and healthier um, struggle the most is that the industry is really not teaching them how to make this as easy as possible while eating as much as possible while staying lean. And I have two examples here. I have this first one and then I have the second one. The first one and I'll go ahead and explain the ratio in a bit, but the first one is for those who either are too busy to exercise or do not choose to or want to exercise or train. This second example right here is for those people who do want to train, do understand the benefit of taking some time in the day and uh, training the body. So if we can see here, um, this is simply protein grams plus fiber grams in relation to carb grams and fat grams everything on this side if we're not exercising we want to keep low and then everything on this side we want to keep high now even if you're choosing not to exercise i still recommend to include some carbs maybe have one meal every other day and the reason for that is because the body is adaptive so if you are not giving the body enough energy from carbohydrates what it's going to do is it's going to fight back and reduce lean body mass regardless of how lean you want to be because there's something called the body fat set point. So let me go back a slide and I'll explain that. The body fat set point is essentially an amount of fat the body is comfortable with that um, it feels like it's in homeostasis when it has that amount of body fat and everyone's body fat set point is different, right? So let's say that um, we'll just use me as an example. I'm dieting and I'm at 10% body fat right here, right? This is 90% lean mass. If I don't include carbohydrates every so often, this lean mass is going to drift in this direction in order to bring this to 80% lean mass and to bring the body fat to 20%. Now let's take a look at the second scenario. For those of you who do decide to exercise and train the body, carbohydrates are extremely beneficial because if you think of your lean body mass as creating a demand for carbohydrates, then the body will not 
store carbohydrates as body fat. It'll store carbohydrates as glycogen in the muscles, and then the body will burn body fat. I know it's kind of weird. Everybody out there is telling you different that if you eat carbohydrates, they're stored as fat. But if we eat carbohydrates with fat together, like in this first example here, the reason why we have such an obese society is because we're eating, this is flipped, this ratio here is flipped. We're eating a lot of foods that are high in carbs and fats together with very low protein and fiber. And just to name a few, um, for example, French fries. French fries are potatoes, which are carbohydrates, deep fried in fat. Um, ice cream is sugar and milk fat. Um, cookies, cakes, muffins, foods like that, sugar and oil very low protein and fiber so that's the reason why we have such an obese um, society such obese populations now when it comes to training i just want to make these two points women have feminine bodies and men have masculine bodies now when it comes to sports the aesthetics of the body are secondary to what your main goal is so for example if we have crossfit we have two crossfitters one's a male one's a female the main goal for these two athletes should be to be the best crossfitters it shouldn't be to be the leanest or to be the healthiest or to be the most aesthetic because there is a way to train that actually puts aesthetics and leanness above performance all right and actually when it comes to sport also sports are not sustainable because if you think about it if you get injured then you're unable to train for the rest of your life which means from that point on you'll have limited mobility for the rest of your life so the best two training movements for women with no equipment are hip raises and air squats and the reason for this is because when it comes to women their aesthetics is measured by the golden ratio the golden ratio is the hip measurement compared to the waist measurement so that's why we're targeting a lot of legs here hip raises targets the posterior of the legs and the lower back and then air squats will um tie in some of the front of the the upper leg and the shins as well developing a nice lower body for women on the contrary for men um, their standards of beauty are the difference between the circumference of the shoulders and the waist. So in this case, we do want to incorporate a lot of upper body push-ups and pull-ups. They're the most compound that you could do without any equipment. So here is the answer to that question. Weight loss is not sustainable, but improving body composition is sustainable. And everything that we just mentioned will help you with sustaining, improving and sustaining body composition for the rest of your life.